Hey, it's Lee with the Turquoise Valentine, and I wanted to show all of you how I paint or Mod Podge with scrapbook paper on the wood cutouts that you purchased from me. They all come with masking, like a tape type stuff that goes on the front to protect the wood when I'm cutting with the laser from the wood getting charred. So you have to peel that off of all your pieces. So here I'm just going to peel this off. And this, I'm going to show you how it helps when you paint certain areas to keep paint from getting on other areas. So I'm just peeling off the top and then I'm peeling off his feet. Even though the feet have pieces that go on top of that, I still like to paint the under part in case just a little touch of it shows on the edges. So I'm just using regular craft uh, acrylic paint from Walmart or Michaels or Hobby Lobby or wherever. And you can do this with a paintbrush, you can do it with a makeup sponge, whatever you'd like to do. But see how the masking helps the paint from getting on the other parts of the wood. So you can actually use it, you know, to your advantage. So I'm just painting that and then I'm going to paint his feet. And usually it takes a couple of coats. So now I'm just taking off the uh, pieces, masking off the pieces of the, you know, with the feet. And I'm going to paint them red because I painted underneath them because it might show just a little bit. And there's that one. Now I'm doing the second one. I just enjoy painting these little pieces so much. Painting on wood is just, it's just nice and it takes the paint so well. So I'm just kind of going back and out, back over it, you know, so on a second coat because it does take a couple of coats usually with the craft paint. So now I'm going to show you how I take off the next piece, which is going to be his beard. And you kind of have to strategically figure out what you're going to paint first or what masking you're going to take off and so forth and so on. There's this little beard. So now I have to be careful not to get it up in the red part. But see, the nose still has the masking on it, so it's fine. But he has a nose piece that goes over that too, but I haven't peeled that off yet. Haven't peeled off his little his little body section either, so that masking is going to help me from getting it on that, even though I am going to cover it with scrapbook paper. But you can kind of be a little messy and not have to worry about getting it on the other parts because of the masking, which, you know, it helps you to your advantage. So I'm going over that. Just trying to get it all good in the wood. It kind of soaps up and... You have to kind of keep going back over it just to get it all smoothed out. So now I'm going to do the little ball on his hat. Like I said, it has a piece too that goes on top of that. But I like to paint the underneath there just in case it shows on the edges if I don't get it lined up perfectly straight when I glue the piece on. So there's the little part that goes on his hat, the little ball. You could replace this with a big pom-pom if you'd like. But I'm actually going to show you, I sand some of the pieces too, because when you pull off the masking, it can pull the fibers of the wood. So sometimes you may have to hit, hit it with this little sanding block or a piece of sandpaper just to get it smoothed out. Now I'm going to paint that. And you don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing. You can use scrapbook paper on all the pieces if you'd like. I was just trying to do a little bit of both to show you how um, you can use the masking to your advantage for painting and also use the masking for a template when you use scrapbook paper. So now we're going to start working on the scrapbook paper parts. So I'm peeling off the piece for the hat. Real careful not to tear it. And this is what we're going to use as a template to put on the scrapbook paper to cut your paper out perfectly to go right onto your piece. So, as I always tell y'all, I always put my piece down in the corner of the paper. Don't put it in the middle because then you waste the whole piece of paper because you can cut this piece out and then use the rest of the paper for something else, another project, and save it. So I got to move it a couple of times because I didn't get it lined up straight and at the edge of the paper and something was hanging off. So bear with me. A 
Okay, and you just smooth it down and it's gonna stick to the paper, but it's not sticky enough to where it's gonna tear the paper when you pull it off. It's not that tacky of a, of a masking. So then I'm just gonna cut out the square so it's gonna make me easier to cut around the piece. So now I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut around the little piece of masking. And like I said, it's stuck down so you don't have to worry about it, you know, sliding around and that kind of thing. You can just cut around it and you'll have a perfect piece to go on your uh, wood piece. You can dress these little things up and make them look so cute with all the different choices of scrapbook paper there are. Or you could choose to paint the whole thing. You don't have to use scrapbook paper. I was just trying to show you both options. So now you just take the masking and peel it off your paper and it comes right off. Now we're gonna Mod Podge it on the little hat. You can get Mod Podge at Dollar Tree. You can get it at Hobby Lobby. Any craft store has Mod Podge. You could use white school glue if you didn't have any Mod Podge. It would work just as well. So I'm just spreading it on with a paintbrush, trying to get it on the edges good so the edges will stick really well. Paintbrush works real good with this. Just careful not to get it on my red part. Now I'm putting that down. And you kind of line it up where you want it to go and smooth it out. And don't worry if you have some little overhang of the paper over the hat because we're going to fix that. So now I'm going to work on his body piece. And I'm just going to pull that masking off. And look how pretty you have pretty crisp lines where I painted that beard there. So we kind of use the masking to our advantage. Because I used to peel off all the masking before I mailed all my pieces. And, of course, that takes a little extra time uh, on my part. And everybody was giving me feedback of saying, oh, leave it on, leave it on. So I started leaving it on. And it actually helps you in the creative process to do like what I'm showing you here. So now we're putting this piece on our paper. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the hat. We're just going to smooth it out on the paper then I'm going to um, trim around it and have a perfect piece to go right into that place where his body is. So I'm just cutting around it. Like I said, put it to the edge of your paper where you don't waste the whole entire sheet. You can save that for another project. Now we're just going to carefully trim around the little piece of masking for our template. It's kind of like making paper doll clothes when we were kids. So this is how you know it's going to be perfect every time. Works wonders. Okay, I got that cut out. Now I'm just going to peel the masking right off and then we can throw that piece away. And we have a perfect little template of his pants or his body, whatever you want to call it. Now I'm going to Mod Podge that onto him. Same way I did the hat. Just going to put a little Mod Podge on my piece. And then I'm going to just kind of brush it out with my paintbrush. And be sure to get the edges good just because so, the edges will stay down. Just try not to get it so thick and wet. Just enough just to coat the surface just to adhere it down. You don't want to get it too... Um, too wet and runny it'll squeeze all out the sides so just kind of brush that all around then we're going to put the piece on him there and smooth it out good make sure you line it up on the sides where you don't have you know have the overhang but if you do have some overhang we're going to fix that i'm going to show you how here in just a second okay we got his little body part on so now we're going to move on to the very next part and I'm going to show you how to take care of the edges. If you have some overhang, so you take some sanding paper or sanding block, and you're going to go in downward strokes. Don't go back and forth. Just go in downward strokes and sand off that paper. The paper will come off in a clean line every time. If a sanding block's too big, you can use a fingernail file. Works great for those little places that you can't get with the sandpaper or the block. And just go in down strokes when you um, sand the paper off and it comes off very clean and smooth and it looks perfect. So I'm going to do that to his little sides over here on his body. 
See how it overhangs a little bit? You just sand downward strokes and it just takes that paper right off and it makes it a, just a clean line. It's a little trick for you to know. My dogs are wanting to bark in the background <laughs> like they always do. So just going down strokes just like that and the, get the little edges there. All the little pieces and parts. Okay, now we're going to work on his nose. We're going to paint it the same way. Then we're going to, I'm going to show you how I attach all the pieces. So I just sand a little bit because it does kind of pull up the fiber sometimes on the wood. So that's a little tip that you can just um, sand it down, make it a little more smooth. Because it's just a great surface to paint on. So we're just going to give his nose a little coat of paint, maybe two, just to get it covered. My dogs are wanting to bark. <laughs> They have to have their little input on the video. So now I'm just giving the beard another coat because like I said, sometimes it takes a couple of coats depending on the color you use, especially white. It always comes through translucent. So now I'm going to peel off the piece over his nose. That's our last piece. And see how pretty the clean the lines are? And now I use uh, super glue gel is what I like to use just because it doesn't move around. It kind of gives you a little bit of time to put your piece down. Um, and it adheres pretty quickly within a few seconds. Um, as you'll see here, I, the nose just doesn't want to stick for me, but it, it works in the end. But there's, I just kind of smooth it out with the tip and then I just place it where I want to place it. And like I said, you have a few seconds to kind of move the piece around to get it positioned before the glue actually takes hold. So I'm putting his little feet pieces on and just let them sit. And, and in a few, you know, 30 seconds or so, it's, it's there. So now I'm doing his little hat. And you could put a pom-pom here if you wanted to. Um, you, it's up to you how you want to do your piece or, you know, embellish it. Um, so now I'm just going to take my little marker, my Posca pens that I really like. I got from Amazon. And I'm just kind of kind of give some little detail to it. Just do some little lines here and there. Uh-oh, his nose isn't quite glued on. But I'm just going to do some little details. These pens are great because they're acrylic paint. They're not oil based, so they dry pretty quickly. And I'm just trying to embellish it however you want to. I'm just showing you how how I did mine to help you out. So I just put some little accent lines. Just gives a little piece a little whimsical look. It's totally optional. Just put a little some little dots and lines. Just kind of accent the edges of everything and just makes it pop a little bit. Pom-pom would look cute up here on his hat. If you wanted to do a real big pom-pom, that would be adorable. He's wanting to move again. If you put a lot of glue and you make it kind of thick, it does take a little longer for the super glue to hold. But that's just, um, you could use hot glue if you wanted to, to put, to glue the pieces down. I just find that the super glue gel works really good for me because it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Even in the heat, it's not going to fall off if you store your stuff in the attic. So he's all stuck, I think, except for his nose. And there he is. And that's how I do my pieces. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks. If you would like to get some wood shapes like this, you can go to the turquoisevalentine.com and click my shop.